In this video, we take a look at the use of records to store data. So let's start by looking at storing and retrieving simple text data. So we've seen from examples in previous videos that text files provide us with a simple way to store data when a program is not running. The contents of variables can effectively be copied from the RAM, which is where variables are stored when a program is running, but is volatile, and then can be stored permanently in a text file to secondary storage. This allows the program to make use of the same data when it's later run again. In the simple text file we're showing here, each set of four line represents one record. We effectively have the name of a character followed by three integers, which with our example game we showed in previous videos, represents some statistics for that character. The order that the data is stored in this text file is very specific. If they appear out of order, our program will fail to work. And this is known as data dependency. Simple text files stored in this way are useful for low volumes of data. And here's another example, such as a game configuration file. Structured data and records held in simple text files can also easily be loaded and stored into arrays or lists. Access to this data is extremely fast once it's been loaded from the text file into an array or list in memory. Data stored like this can't be accessed, however, by more than one user on a different computer at a time. And we typically use it to hold data that's read in from a file, because it's quicker, therefore, to access and manipulate. This is still, though, only suitable for small data sets. When working with larger volumes of data or a multi-user environment, simple text files are no longer sufficient for storing records. External databases are used to store larger datasets or records in a structured way. They can be easily accessed and changed by data manipulation languages such as SQL, something we look at in a video later in this topic. In this situation, we say the program is data independent. Many users can access the data from different computers at the same time. Data in databases are stored in records as shown here. And each record contains a number of different fields. And each field can have its own and separate data type. There's also a data structure available in many languages called a record data structure. Now, if you're programming in Python, this isn't something that's available to you, but it's available in other languages such as VB, so it's worth knowing about. The record structure is simply a collection of related fields, where a field is a variable, and each field in a record can have a different data type. And we use it to collect together variables that are related to each other. So in this example, we have a record that we've called T car containing six related fields. Now you could call this record whatever you want and don't worry too much about the capital T. It's a bit of a standard convention in many languages to start the name for a record with a capital letter T. The important thing here is to see that we've mixed and matched six different variables and different data types and collect them together under a generic record structure that we're calling T car. There are three steps to be able to use the record data structure if your language supports it. You define the record structure. In other words, you tell the program what fields are going to be in it. You declare a variable or an array to use the record structure. And then finally, we can assign and retrieve data from the variables inside the record. So let's look at each stage. Now note, because Python doesn't support the record structure, the example code we're showing you here is from Visual Basic. Don't get too worried about the actual code. We're just getting you to understand the record data structure that's available in many languages. So you can see we've declared the record structure and given it a name, tcar, and then we've simply listed 
all the variables that this record structure will contain. We've listed the name of those variables and we've stated the data types for those variables. And then we've written end structure to tell the program that's the end of our record definition. Now we've got our template for our record definition. We can now use it to set up variables. So here I declare a variable called car1 and I tell the computer that car1's data type will be the record structure that we defined earlier by t car. So I could have as many cars as I wanted here, car1, car2, I could even have an array full of different cars. Each of them would have the template of t car. And now I can start to assign variables to my car record structure. So here you can see car1.regplate becomes equal to a string and car1.price becomes equal to an integer. And notice this dot syntax because of course I could have set up lots of copies of this car record structure, car1, car12, car100, and each one is containing its own structure and set of variables, reg plate, make model price, engine size and petrol. So on the screen there is just a summary of all the code from Visual Basic, which you would use to define and then declare and then assign variables to a record data structure. Now the programming language syntax we've been using up until this point to show you record data structures was from Visual Basic. In the exam, AQA will be using a sort of pseudocode and I've shown you here how a record data structure would look if it was presented to you as part of an exam question or scenario. So let's just recap what we've gone over in this video. First of all, records stored in simple text files. We store the data on secondary storage, for example, a hard disk, and it's used to store the data permanently when the application is closed. This is useful for small volumes of data, like game configuration files. Each entry in the text file is stored in a new line or separated with some kind of identifier like a comma or a tab. Can require a linear search to find the data. And this is slow. It's useful for structured text files like CSV. Next, we looked at records stored in arrays or lists. This is when the data is read from the file and then stored in memory used to store data while a program is running and again useful for small volumes of data an algorithm is using. The array can be single or multi-dimensional allowing for tables of data to be stored and it uses index to refer to data items. Efficient algorithms or linear searches can then be used to find the data in RAM. We then looked at records stored in databases. This is often stored on remote servers often used to store data shared by many users, e.g. a ticket booking system. And data is stored in records and fields. Uses advanced data structures to store data in an efficient way. And uses very efficient algorithms to search and sort data executed on the servers. This is much more secure than storing data in simple text files. And the order of the fields in the database is now independent of the code. And finally, we looked at the record structure that's available in some languages. This is simply a collection of related fields, where a field is a variable. Each field in a record can have a different data type. And we covered the three steps in making use of record data structures. Define the record structure, declare a variable or an array to use, and assign and retrieve data. And remember to be careful to note the dot syntax when using a record. Thank you.